Hey everyone, I'm going to make my case why JD.com down 73% is a ridiculously cheap growth stock to add. So I'll look at its latest quarterly results and then I'll show you their longer term trend lines. And then finally, I'll compare that all against its valuation to justify my reasoning for why I think JD.com is an undervalued growth stock at current valuations. So let's take a look. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so you can see here JD.com down 72.55% off its highs. And these are off the highs it reached in early 2021. Sometimes I get questions asking, wait a minute, JD.com is not down. It's actually up in 2024. That's true. It's up this year. But if you look back further from the highest point, which was back in 2021, it's down 72 and a half percent. And I'm looking at a five year history here when comparing its high point versus where it's down from that high point. All right. So if you look at the latest quarterly results from JD.com, net revenue increased to 260 RMB millions, and that was up from 242 RMB millions in the same quarter the prior year. So less than 10% growth here from JD.com. So it's not an explosive growth stock. Don't get that mixed. It's growing at steady rates, not growing quickly. But the good thing about JD.com is that it's improving profitability. It's improving cash flow. Let me show you the profit margin here. So you could see gap net profit margin up to 2.7%. And that was up from 2.6% in the same quarter the prior year. Now, if I look at a long ter longer term trend line for JD.com's operating profit margin over a trailing 12 month period, here's the type of trend I love seeing the company moving steadily upward, making progress as revenue is growing, achieving economies in scale getting better at running the business, operating profit margin up to 3.04%, up from negative 6% in 2015. Now, its business model, the logistics, and all of the capital-intensive nature of the business suggests this will never be a high profit margin business. It's not going to be one of those businesses that gets to 30 40 50% operating profit margin. Investors in JD.com should be happy if the company achieves close to or slightly above 10%. That would be a great achievement for JD.com. So this is excellent progress towards that trend. Similarly, if you look at its cash flow from operations to sales, you see a similar trend line, 6.48% in the most recent trailing 12 month period, up from roughly two, two and a quarter percent in 2015. Again, making progress towards that goal. And again, just like the operating profit margin, it's cash flow from operations to sales will never reach the very high levels, 40, 50%, but it could reach, you know, 15, 20, 25%. And the reason why cash flow from operations could be better than operating profit margin is because of the significant sums in non-cash expenses like stock-based compensation, like depreciation and amortization, it should allow JD.com on a larger scale to generate better cash flows from operations compared to what it's generating in terms of operating profit margin. Further, if you look at the free cash flow over the trailing 12 month period, you can see that steadily increasing for four consecutive quarters from 19 million in Q1 2023 to 33 and a half million for Q2 2023 to 39.4 million in Q3 2023 to 40.7 million in Q4 2023 and now up to 50.6 million in Q1 2024. So a nice steadily increasing metric in free cash flow for JD.com. Now, the big difference between cash flow from operations and free cash flow is capital investment. These are investments in things like uh, warehouses, in uh, planes, in trucks, 
long-lasting goods where a company shells out cash and expects to use that for several years. That's a big difference between expenses like, for instance, advertising, which in most cases is expensed as incurred. So if you spend $25 million on advertising, that goes directly in your income statement as an expense. If you spend $25 million on a warehouse, that goes as a capital investment, and then you depreciate that asset on the income statement as depreciation over maybe 10, 15, 20, 30 years, depending on the category of investment and the depreciation category as stated by the local accounting principles. So that's the big difference in terms of free cash flow and cash flow from operations. And free cash flow is the more comprehensive metric. It includes more than cash flow from operation includes because you're adding the capital investment to the cash flow from operations figure. So all of which are moving in the right direction for JD.com. Finally, the stock is trading at a single digit valuation. It's trading at a forward price to earnings of just eight, just eight. 8.028 to be precise. Now, the company's growing revenue, it's growing cash flow, it's growing free cash flow, all of which point to an excellent business. However, however, it is a China based business. And so that's been some of the concern here with JD.com and other companies like Alibaba and others that are trading at discounted valuations because of the geopolitical risk. And that's understandable. Some discount is deserved when you're dealing with the geopolitical risk. You have to account for that fact. You have to be willing to pay a lower valuation because you're taking on greater risk. And so some of that is understandable. But I feel the geopolitical risk is over accounted for in this valuation. I feel the geopolitical risk is bringing down the valuation here more than it should. This company should be trading at a higher valuation, in my opinion, forward PE in the double digits, low double digits, but a low double digit valuation would be reasonable here. A forward PE of 11, 12, 13 would be reasonable for a company showing this kind of growth in revenue and profit margin and free cash flow. So I feel the stock is undervalued at its current valuation, trading at a forward PE of eight and down 72.5% off its high. So this is one undervalued growth stock I think investors can add to their portfolios. And I have here rated for myself, my own ranking, I have it ranked as a buy. Did you know that over 90% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed? It'll really help support my channel if you hit that subscribe button. And oh, by the way, one of the benefits of being subscribed is that I take requests from subscribers more often than I do from non-subscribers. So if you prefer that benefit, please subscribe to the channel.